misconduct case, because as we said, there's the eligibility and there's the qualifiers. You can be disqualified from receiving unemployment compensation if you were let go from your job because of work-related misconduct. In those cases, the burden is on your employer to prove that there was misconduct. They have to show what you did or what happened as to why you lost your job. It is not on you. So you want to let your employer go into it. If they aren't able to prove misconduct, then you might be qualified for unemployment. They have to show that there was misconduct. It's not for you to go in there and say, I did this, I did this. You know, it's for the employer to show that. And so if it's evenly balanced, you were able to prove your point, they were able to prove their point, but not as well as you did yours, then you're qualified. I mean, that's basically the cut and dry of a misconduct case. On the other hand, for the voluntary quit case, it's still like you don't have to prove anything at first, but if your employer then says, well, this is what she did, and it kind of looks like it could be a voluntary quit, then the burden shifts back to you to explain why it was not a voluntary quit. And as Marty said, a voluntary quit is that you left entirely of your own free will. There was no forced resignation. There was no other reason you left, you know, because of whatever. But you do have to have a good reason, such as it's not good for your health or safety or something like that. So what are they looking for? What are the deputy and appeals examiner looking for? They're most interested in either your last day at the job, a few days before your last day at the job, or a few weeks. You don't have to go all the way back to the first day you started working. They don't want to know your whole work history at all. They're really interested in what happened and what was the culmination before you were let go. That's the most important thing. Because we have a lot of clients who come in and they feel like this is their time to tell everything that this employer has ever done to them. This is just not, that's just not what they want to hear. They want to know kind of towards the end what happened. You can tell me the whole story, but when we go in, we want to keep it succinct to just a few days before exactly what happened before you were let go. So as far as misconduct, they don't want to know exactly why you're fired, but only to the extent of if it's for misconduct. I mean, and it's kind of hard to explain that, but since Virginia is an at-will state, I mean, you could be let go for almost any reason. They could hire you for any reason, promote you for any reason, let you go for any reason except any type of prohibited reason, such as some type of gender discrimination, disability, racism, something like that. But they can let you go if you have on a purple shirt today and they do not like purple. She might lose her job today. So you don't want to go in there and say, well, they, you know, they, I deserve to keep my job. I did this, I did that. That's not the issue. It's really just like whether you committed some type of work-related misconduct and as a result of that, you lost your job. That's it. I mean, we just have a lot of cases and it's understandable. You're upset. You want to go in here. You want to lay it down to this employee. You want to tell them everything that they've ever done and that you deserve. And that's just, although we understand, that's just not what you want to say in here. You just want to say, what rule did I break? Did I know about the rule before I did it? And if, you know, did I deliberately break that rule? That's really the core issue. Also, another thing, like what is important? They don't want to know how other employees are treated, how they let other people take a lunch break for an hour and I only get 30 minutes. Unless it's for some, you know, it's just not, the rules aren't distributed equally. You know, only the women can go to the bathroom for a long time and the men can't or something like that. But not just, I mean, because also you want to, you don't want to go in there just kind of like you're telling everything that's ever happened. So they're not interested in what other, you know, other employees were able to do. And they really have a little interest in what happened after you were let go. You say, oh, I found out after I was let go that they now let you do X, Y, and Z. But was it a rule when you were there? And did you know you couldn't do it? It doesn't matter what's going on now. Unless you find out they're intimidating witnesses, like you have a witness that you want to come and testify at your hearing, but you found out after that the employer basically said, anyone who helps Ms. Jones, you're out of here. That might be important. But now the new rule is everyone has an hour lunch break, not important for the hearing. Also, your reputation and character are not an issue and they're not going to be affected by the unemployment case. 
So if your employer is in there saying she has a character to do this and this and this, usually you just want to kind of interrupt it. Because you know, that's, not, that's not what they're looking for. They don't want to know what your character is. It is all that it, all the appeals examiner or the deputy wants to know is why you were let go. Did you know about the rules? Did you follow the rules? I mean, that's pretty much it. Like Marty said earlier, they are getting scrammed right now with so many hearings, so many appeals. If you have a short amount of time, you want to get in the most important information, exactly what they want to hear, and you want to do it quickly. And and where you appear to be the nice employee who did their job and just you don't understand what happened. You don't want to seem hostile, you don't want to seem mad, which I'm going to get into later. So, so but, and just know that whatever happens during the VC hearing is completely confidential. It's between you, if you have a representative, the hearing officer, or appeals examiner, and your employer. It, it shouldn't go past that. They, they're not going to go and tell someone else. So it's kind of like they just happened at the VC, stayed at the VC. So it is a time where you want to tell what happened. You don't want to kind of be shy about what happened, but don't feel like if I tell them, then they're going to like if you have, if you do have a health concern that you didn't want to mention before or something, it's not something that's going to come back out later. It, it's going to stay within that year. Um, next slide. So during the hearing, the deputy and the appeals examiner, they may consider something called hearsay, which is basically someone else telling what they heard someone else say. Um, in court, that cannot happen, but during these administrative hearings, you can say, I heard that someone said that someone else said, actually, and they use it. The issue is, what is weighted more? What's most important? Someone who heard what someone else said or what you said or what you've seen? So if you're at the hearing or you're on the telephone and you tell them what you said or what you've seen, that is weighted more than something that someone says they heard happen or they someone told them that they said. So just know that, because you might have a hearing and you find out someone you know, your supervisor testifies that a coworker said, you did this. But you said, you say, I did X. And even though your coworker said you did Z, the supervisor wasn't there. The coworker isn't there to say, you are there to say what happened. So that's what's weighted as most important is that you have personal knowledge, you were there, you've seen it, you said it. So just know that even though everything can come in, that doesn't mean everything is weighted the same. Um, and also, the live testimony is more important because that way the hearing officer or the deputy can ask you questions or you can ask the employer questions. Like being able to have a cross-examination of it, that makes it that much more important. Like someone can ask you a question and you can still say, this is what I did. You, your, you know, your testimony stands up to any type of questioning. That just makes it more important. Um, so at the appeals examiner hearing, just like Marty said, what happens at the deputy determination doesn't really matter. Yes, they're going to have the record, they have his notes, everything, but what's most important is now what's happening in front of the, the hearing officer. So this is past the deputy, this is at the appeals examiner hearing. So you want to kind of treat this like your first bite at the apple. It's, it's kind of brand new and you want to use everything that you have and you want to come off clearly and explain exactly what happened. This is your, your opportunity because the evidence that they brought in as a deputy is it, kind of hearsay at this point. You know, what's going on right now that's live with the witnesses and with you, that's, that's going to be way higher. So during your appeals examiner hearing, you want to act like it's brand new. You want to give everything. You don't want to say, well, then you already read that or, you know, you're telling them what happened. And then another thing, we kind of have to, well, Marty came up with this ABCs of your hearing. One is attitude. You're upset, understandable, and then your employer comes in there, and a lot of times they might not be telling the truth. They might be saying stuff about you that is not true. So you might get a little upset, understandable, but we just want to keep it to ourselves. Um, you get in there and they say something and you go say, no, it is. It doesn't look good. Write it down if you have a representative, because I'm always telling my clients, write it down. Let me appear crazy. Don't let you don't want to appear crazy. Let me let me ask the questions. Let me appear mad. Let me appear, you know, crazy. You want to just sit there and relax, even if someone is telling a complete lie on you, you're just gonna look like you. And even smile. You can even smile at them. Um, so you really want to, especially, this is why we like in person. I'm saying all this because if you're on the telephone, obviously you can't do this. But this is why we ask for in-person hearings. Because it's, you 
just can't get around being able to look